नमस्कार दोस्तों स्वागत है आपका दो ऑटोमोटिव में और आज हम बात करेंगे थ्रोटल पोजीशन सेंसर काम कैसे करता है तो आज इस वीडियो में हम देखेंगे कि थ्रोटल पोजीशन सेंसर क्यों लगाया जाता है उसे कहाँ पे लगाया जाता है उसका कंस्ट्रक्शन किस तरह का है और वो काम कैसे करता है तो शुरुआत करता है नसा सिटी से तो मॉडर्न फ्यूल इंजेक्शन सिस्टम को कितना फ्यूल इंजेक्ट करना है वो कैलकुलेट करने के लिए थ्रोटल पोजीशन जाननी ज़रूरी होती है तो उसी पोजीशन को जानने के लिए लगाया जाता है थ्रोटल पोजीशन सेंसर तो अब बात करते हैं सेंसर के लोकेशन की तो थ्रोटल बॉडी के अंदर थ्रोटल वाल के साथ डायरेक्टली कनेक्ट किया जाता है थ्रोटल पोजिशन सेंसर को तो अब बात करते हैं सेंसर के कंस्ट्रक्शन की तो थ्रोटल वाल के ऊपर सेंसर की नीडल डायरेक्टली माउंट की हुई होगी और नीडल के साथ होगा एक रेजिस्टिव वायर एलिमेंट अब ये चीज़ क्या है कि अगर इस वायर के किसी भी पॉइंट के ऊपर आप रेजिस्टेंस मेजर करते हो तो हर एक पॉइंट के ऊपर आपको अलग अलग रजिस्टेंस मेजर होगा अब जो नीडल है उसे और रजिस्टिव वायर एलिमेंट है उसे उन दोनों को ई के साथ डायरेक्टली कनेक्ट किया होगा और रजिस्टिव वायर की सर्किट कम्प्लीट करने के लिए उसे अर्थ कर दिया जाएगा तो अब बात करते हैं सेंसर के वर्किंग की तो एंजिन कंट्रोल मॉड्यूल जो रेजिस्टिव वायर एलिमेंट है उसके अंदर बहुत ही कम करंट फ्लो करवाएगा वो करंट नीडल के अंदर जाएगा और नीडल का कनेक्शन वापस ईसीएम के साथ होने पर वो सर्किट कंप्लीट कर देगा अब जब भी थ्रोटल वाल क्लोज होगा यानी कि आपने एक्सलेटर पैडल को नहीं दबाया हुआ होगा तो रेजिस्टेंस सबसे ज़्यादा होगा और जो आउटपुट करंट या फिर रिटर्निंग करंट है वो बहुत ही कम होगा अब जब आप पैडल को प्रेस करेंगे तो जो थ्रोटल वाल है वो ओपन होगा और जो नीडल है वो रजिस्टिव वायर एलिमेंट के ऊपर स्लाइड होगी जिसके कारण जो रेजिस्टेंस है वो कम हो जाएगा और आउटपुट करंट बढ़ जाएगा तो करंट और थ्रोटल वाल की जो पोजीशन है उन दोनों के बीच में एक प्रॉपर रिलेशन बन जाएगा तो इंजन कंट्रोल मॉड्यूल करंट को मेजर करके थ्रोटल वाल की पोजीशन का पता लगा लेगी तो आज के लिए बस इतना ही अगर आपको ये वीडियो पसंद आया हो तो लाइक कीजिए शेयर कीजिए और सब्सक्राइब कीजिए द ऑटोमोटिव चैनल को ताकि नए लेटेस्ट टेक्नोलॉजिकल वीडियो का नोटिफिकेशन आपको सबसे पहले मिला रहे In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at a throttle position sensor. That's this part you see right here on the engine. Years ago, you did not have these on carbureted engines. You would have your cable connected to your gas pedal. When you press down on the pedal, you would have an accelerator pump inside the carburetor that would squirt gas into the intake. What would happen on a carbureted engine is once the engine starts up, you have engine vacuum and that vacuum is what continues to draw the fuel into the engine. If you depress the pedal a lot more, it's going to allow more fuel to be drawn in and if you take your foot off the gas pedal, then very little fuel is going to be drawn into the engine. Most of it will be drawn through the idle circuit of the carburetor. Most vehicles made today use what is called a throttle body. That's what this is. There's no more carburetor. You have your intake manifold and on this side is where the air intake is. The only thing that this linkage now does that's connected to the gas pedal is it opens and closes a butterfly plate inside the throttle body which regulates how much air enters the engine. So the faster you go, the butterfly is going to go from being straight up and down. It's going to go sideways, letting the full flow of air enter the engine. To go faster, you need more air and more fuel. To go slower, you're going to use less fuel and less air. In order for the computer to know how much the accelerator pedal has been depressed, there's a rod that connects to where the linkage goes to the gas pedal. It goes straight through and it ties into the throttle position sensor. The throttle position sensor, this is another one identical to what's in here. This is the faulty one. It's spring-loaded. And what it is, is a resistive element. In the position you see it in right now, which means the accelerator pedal is not being depressed, it's going to give off a signal voltage to the computer, which is very low, around a half of a volt. 
the more you depress the accelerator pedal, this is going to rotate, which is going to give you a higher output voltage. The higher the output voltage, that means the engine is going faster. That means more fuel is coming out of the injectors. When a throttle position sensor fails, you may or may not see a check engine light showing up on your dashboard. But if you do use a code scanner on the computer, plugged in under the dashboard or elsewhere, it should display a trouble code for a throttle position sensor. Some of the common symptoms of a failing or faulty throttle position sensor could be when you go to accelerate off the line, you give it gas, the RPM starts to increase, the car starts to move forward, and then you may notice the car, even though the gas pedal is in the same position, the RPMs drop and the engine will not shift into gear. You may also be driving down the highway, keeping the gas pedal in a set position, and you may notice the car start to slow down and the RPM drop. The signal voltage coming off of the throttle sensor is very important because the computer also uses the signal voltage information to determine when the engine shifts. So if you have shifting problems, a throttle sensor can cause that as well. What I'm going to do now is show you what a throttle position sensor looks like when you disassemble it. This one here I cut open so you can look on the inside. Once I show you how this works, I'm going to show you how to test it. Okay, you can see this is the part here that rotates. That's the three pin connector. And I already cut the back off. Alright, this was on here. This part right over here is where the resistive element is attached. It appears to be ceramic. So let me lift this up a hair. Okay, turn it this way, and that's what it looks like. You can see the wiper. These two right here are connected together with that copper plate. As it's rotated, those two contacts will glide along this side and that inner area here. Now you can see there's a little spot right there that looks like it's missing. That's not missing. The beginning part is a resistive strip that's around eight, nine hundred ohms, and then it ties into another area right here, which is not resistive. This area here, this large one, that is resistive. So it's resistive from here to the top, and just that little section in there. As the wipers move around, it changes the resistance value, which affects with the output voltages on the signal pin. Testing the throttle position sensor on your vehicle is very easy to do. To perform the test, you're going to need a digital meter. You're going to set it on a DC voltage range. A low range setting will work just fine. Just make sure it's higher than two volts. You're also going to need a couple of jumper wires and a straight pin or a sewing needle. Once the digital meter has been set to DC volts, you're going to take the black probe of the digital meter and you're going to connect that to the battery negative. You can also use an engine ground instead of the negative. You're going to take the other jumper wire and connect it to the positive on the meter, the red. Take the needle, connect it like this. The next step is you're going to want to pull the boot down to expose the wires going into the throttle position sensor. Once you pull it out of the way, you'll be able to reach in to where the wire enters the connector to slide the needle in. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the engine to the on position. Now I'm going to probe the wires. One of them is going to give a reading of around 5 volts DC. Could be slightly above 5 volts or it could be slightly below. But that's the power supply wire. So we're going to look for that first. Let me place this where it's easy to see. Like that. I'm going to slide the boot down 
and probe the wire to look for the one that's 5 volts. So let me go like this. Reach in. And the top wire gives me a 5 volt reading. That's good. Let me go to the next one, which is the center. Center is not giving me a reading, so that means the signal wire is more than likely going to be the bottom one. And we have 0.35 DC volts. You should expect around a half of a volt when you find the signal wire. So in this case, 0.35 volts DC without the gas pedal being depressed is normal. The more you depress the gas pedal, the higher the voltage will be. When it gets as high as possible, around 4, 4.5 volts, that would mean the gas pedal is completely floored. You want to ensure that when you open and close the throttle, this is where the gas pedal will be pushed, that this reading moves slowly up and then back down. So right now, if I was to push the gas pedal in, you're going to see the signal voltage rise. There's a little bit. Keep going. More and more. And it's nice and smooth. And let me go wide open. Is around 4.35. As long as you observe that it's very smooth and that it doesn't go 0.6 or 0.67 and then it might go down to 0.3 again before it goes to 0.9, you could have a dead spot. You do not want to see that. Now that's the problem I had. I had a dead spot right after the beginning where the pedal is depressed. So if I push the pedal down very slightly like that, it would go 0.39, 0.42, and then it would go back down to 0.35 even though I did not release the pedal. And then once it hit that little dead spot, it jumped back to 0.4955 and went up. Like everything else, throttle position sensors do wear out. Fortunately, they are very simple to test. When you're done, turn the key off and you're good to go. Pull this back out. If you enjoyed this video, please rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you very much for watching.